the home of the home of the automobile, your favorite brand of cereal, and the Michigan International Speedway. The fastest track on the NASCAR International Cup Series schedule, going over 220 miles per hour. It's Bolio Brown who got the pole. Rada in second, LTD in third, Marv in fourth, and we're underway here at Michigan. There is a lot of multi grooves you can use onto this track. There's really, they're all worked out perfectly. There's really no manual ones you have to take. There's no specific groove that you can take because of how wide this track is. You can basically take anything. Oh, we have a crash already. It's the 11 who starts it. A lot of cars involved. Looks like Opsal, Roten, the 11 who started it, Edgewater as well. Down to 1 4 speed. We can see what happened here. Yeah, it starts with the 10 and the 11 colliding onto the 4. And there's nothing Opsal can do about that. Yankovic and Signs do a good job at dodging, but the rest of them all get involved. Turn 3 is the most common place to crash in almost any NASCAR track. And as you can see in the helicopter cam, those are all of the cars I got involved into that wreck here in lap 1. Well, who just managed to dodge it. And here are the, all of the cars that crashed coming into the pit now. I think Edgewater and Falcon Star could still race, but the rest of them are surely done. Oh, did we have another crash? Oh, no, we did. That's just the 9 to the 80 having contact. Three wide, four wide coming into turn one. And now it's Rada who's taking the lead for LTD and Crowley's into the wall. Gonna lose a lot of positions there and block so sure one to try to keep his place. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's a nice move to do to your team. Hey, look at the 23 of Volio Brown. He fell down a bunch of positions. He's running mid mid pack now. From lap one, you can see that Volio Brown just loses a bunch of positions and cannot find the right groove. Car after car just passing him. That is not good at all. Looks like the 53 also made it. Cromberg also hit into the wall. Zach Johnson's also running in the back of the pack. A lot of cars who you wouldn't expect to be running in the back of the pack are doing so. We are now into lap 5, one fourth of the way over. And it is the 3 of Steve Rada who has the lead. And now Rod is into the wall as well as Noonan, but that doesn't seem to be as effective as it was for the other drivers. Rada, LGD, Martin, Noonan, and Lombardi are your top five. We are now on to lap 10, and we have a very good battle here for first between Luis Casal Namarza and Steve Rada, two drivers who were contending for the title last season, but both of them fell off really quickly when they were early into the playoffs. These drivers are now hoping that they can stay into that chase for much longer. Meanwhile, the, one of the drivers who finished in the bottom of the pack last season, Elian Kovic, is on his first, first, first top five this season. The last car in the top 10 is the 23 of Logan Davenport. Look at the 23 of Folio Brown. Fell from being mid-pack to now almost in the top 10, but look at the run that Connell's got on the outside. Connell and Signs, both of the Skunkworks teammates, are making a pretty good run onto the outside. Meanwhile, the 44 Pasqual is one of the backmarker drivers. A lot of drivers in the back that you wouldn't expect it to be. The 44 is running in 25th and 96th and 22nd. The 57 of Harrell in 19, a bunch of, it said this has basically been a silly season type of race so far. But here is the 8, well the 8 is still a regular title contending driver as well as the 70 and the 14 of Demitale who won your Daytona race earlier. How about, how about the 07 of Sed and the 23 of Brown, they're both rookies who are lead, 
are leading the top 10. Oh, the 70, the 40. Oh, the 70, the 14 got really close there. But they both managed to save it. Great job from the both of them, honestly. And now Lombardi's looking to make the move on Martin. And Martin makes a huge move towards the 14. And Huckleberry does as well. Huckleberry is a lot down, but he did pit early. He might be just waiting it out. And now here's the 70, the 07. Save number, just switched around. Now it's lap 13, and Martin is able to complete the pass on set. And now the battle for the lead is between LGD and 74, and Yakovic is into the wall. When you lose that tire grip, you can get into the wall very easily. And now it's the 8 versus the 88. The 8 and the 74 have now come into pit. Martin has just left the pit. The vast majority of the drivers are coming in right now. I imagine most of these drivers are only going to take two tires because it's really only the right sides that are needed. Here on our spectator cam, you can see it's going to be the 8 of LGD who comes in first. With the 3 in second, the 23 who got pole is now in. Are they all only taking two? Yep, the 8 is only taking two. He's going to be the first out of pit road. Followed by the 3 of Rada. And how about this? The 5 of Noonan. What a run. A great job from Noonan. And now Martin is working his way around. You see Martin and Huckleberry are both working their way around. Let's see what positions they get. LGD is going to be first off of pit road. And he is going to keep his first spot. Just five laps to go here at Michigan. And Buckworth Huckleberry is now going to make the pass on LGD. And that means that Buckworth is going to be your new leader. Sides had a really good pit road stop as well. Well, how about the 71? The 71 gained a bunch of positions from that. Excellent job. The the vomitor said it's the 07 of said, but that's because he's now leaving pit road. Your true leader is fuck with Huckleberry. But he might have some worn tires here. Is he gonna be able to catch up with LGD? The fastest lap bonus currently goes to the 44 of Leonardo Pasquale running a thir almost a 36 flat. It's gonna be four laps to go this time around, and now you can see LGD is working his way around said on very worn tires. And here comes Martin and Brown and the Skuck Works teammates of Connell and Signs. It seems to be that outside groove that seems to work the best, but it's also very likely to hit the wall, so it's risky if you take that lane. You can see the 8 of LGD is much faster than Huckleberry. The gap is 2.8 seconds, but it could be reduced. Now here is the view from the 07 of said, looking to get his first top 5. But how about that? Never mind. Brown and Rock. Topiz, Brown, and Rada both made very good runs. And, oh, oh Rada almost kissed the wall. And here comes Sides with an excellent run onto the inside. Now Sides is going to take the fourth spot coming into turn one. Three laps to go. Huck still has the lead, but we have a very good battle here for fifth. It's now the 95 who has it, but look at the three of Rada onto the outside. It looks like Rada's got it. Is Rada going to make the pass? He's going to be able to pull it off to the outside of signs. The three of Rada with an excellent move, and now it's going to be two to go, and Huckleberry is going to have to come in and pit. Just like a few races ago, he pitted way too early, and now he's going to have to come in or else he's going to blow the tire. And now it's LGD who has the lead, with Martin in second, and look at Rada going for third. And now it's going to be Cottle who's going to try to get the fifth spot from Signs. He's going to have to pass his own teammate for the top five. The last car in the top ten, I believe, is the 23 of Olio Brown. Yes, it is, but here comes Harold and Crowley. We have a lot of good... We are in for a very good finish here. Crowley versus Harold versus Davenport for that final spot in the top ten. LGD, meanwhile, in the lead... Seems to have the lead going on here. He's ahead by exact, basically exactly a second. And Martin is uh, Martin is trying to work his way around it, but Martin is going to hit the wall, I think. Is he going to kiss the wall? No, he just hit it, and that's going to seal the race for LGD. But we have a very good battle for top five here. 
The last car in the top 10 is Bolio Brown. He seems to do, he had, did a really good job. He's going to hold it off. But how about top 5? It's going to be teammates, the 95 versus the 40, fighting for that last spot. LGD is now going to cross the finish line and win here at Michigan. But who's going to be fifth? It's going to be a close one. It's going to be signed to be as the last car to get into the top five. A very fantastic finish here at Michigan with a very good battle for both the win and fifth. Luis Gustavo Namarza gets his first win of the season. Luis Gonzalo de Marza gets his first win of the season. Came in second last year. Came in eighth the year. Came in second in season three. Came in seventh in season four. And now he's off to a pretty good start here. A man whose racing career started in taxi driving in Rio de Janeiro. Worked his way up from taxi driving, etc., etc., straight to the NASCAR International Cup Series. And so far, he has put on a show for both his fans, especially his Brazilian fans, and his Pontiac team.